my homeless girl share my story animated. My story's the worst. Well, we'll see how bad this one is. I love how cringy they are. Hey everyone, I'm Andre, 27. Hi everyone, my name's Joe. Seven years old from the USA. In life, sometimes the best of things come to us in the most unexpected situations. The story that happened between me and Grace two years ago is a typical example of that. Let me tell you about it. I was 25 years old at the Bro's time. Ripping up the cake. God damn. That is not how you hold a fucking cake. Bro, why? Why <laughs> got that in his lap? Bear hugging it. I was old at the time, finishing my degree at dental school. It was drizzling that night, and I was walking quickly home from my evening class when I saw a homeless girl sitting tired on the side of the road near my parking lot. She didn't look older than me, probably around 23. Yo, is he trying to say that he rizzes up a homeless person? I didn't want to step over her rudely and say nothing. I knew many people had aversion to the homeless because of their appearance and problems in life. I feel like that is a power issue. Like, you're going to ask them to go on a date, but, like, like, dude, they're more motivated to say yes because you might give them somewhere to, like, live. But I had always been taught- I feel like that's also- Hey, I'll give you food if you go on a date with me. Ugh. ...by my parents as a child to respect people in all circumstances. So I stopped and said hello to her. In response to my greeting, Grace looked panicked. Her appearance was miserable with her hair, though not in a mess, but quite sticky, and the clothes dirty. But her eyes were like humble pools of water. Because of those eyes, I lingered and talked to her. My parents always said that homeless people appreciate human contact a lot. Moreover, I but was like they're not human. Like, <laughs> bro, like that is the most, that is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. You know, my parents told me that you should always, you should always speak to homeless people because they love human contact. They're not a fucking dog. Like, you could just speak to them. They know, how, they know language. The poor student at the time. So in such a situation, I could only talk to her since I did not have money to give. Conversation. No, she probably thought he was annoying as fuck. I learned that her name was Grace. Grace was forced out of her home by her parents when she was 20 and had been roaming the streets ever since. Regarding the reason for being kicked out of the house, I think she did mention it, but let me be honest with you, at that time, I was too busy watching her and didn't pay That might be the most important thing in this conversation, right? Because, like, you're saying, my homeless girl, you want to date her. She might have got kicked. She might have gotten kicked out of the house for doing crack. Like, are you gonna fucking? You gonna hear her out? You gonna? You gonna actually listen to the goddamn story? You just gonna stare at her eyes? Close attention. I felt ashamed to think that she was a seven out of ten. She had absolutely no unpleasant odor like the homeless people I had encountered before. Oh my god, brother is raiding homeless people. The other woman I met the other day on uh, along the street on my hunt to find a waifu smelled pretty rancid. It's like she'd been not newly homeless. She's been homeless for a while. Grace, on the other hand, is newly homeless. Her scent hasn't begun to reek yet. I came to consciousness and returned to reality. It was raining- Making her prime waifu material. Harder, and Grace was trying to pull up her torn blanket to cover her head. And so I did something that changed Bro, my life- Bro, for the people saying her biddies dig as fuck, dude- She's literally a animated figurine. She is a fucking drawing. Forever, which was to offer her a shower and a meal at my house. The whole drive in the car with me, Grace didn't say anything. She was very shy, but her face, especially her eyes, showed gratitude. When we went up to the apartment where I lived, the neighbors gave us dirty looks, but I just bowed my head and walked faster. I knew what they were thinking. And this is the sixth homeless person you brought home this week. But then I said, I'm on the hunt for my waifu. I can't stop until I find the perfect one. Bring my modest apartment, I quickly showed this her- some Jeffrey Dahmer type shit. Yo, no lie. Like, you're, you're rizzing up homeless people. You murder them and then bury them under your floorboards. Like, that's, like, this is actually the start of, like, how I almost got away with it. Like, this is, like, this is literally the start of a TV show. Her where the bathroom was. After that, you're picking up homeless people, bringing them home and killing them. I did not forget to find and give her ladies shower stuff, which my ex left behind when we broke up. 35 minutes later, she came out with just a towel wrapped around her body. Oh, brother. And in her hands were the clothes she had just washed. I froze for a few seconds. To be honest, she was an 8 out of 10 without the dirt. <laughs> Bro, there's no 
way he's fucking raiding them. Oh my god. To be honest, after she got all that muck off of her, it ranked her up a notch. Still on the hunt for a 10 out of 10 homeless waifu, though. Realizing she was awkward in that towel, I quickly ran to look for the clothes that my ex had left and gave it to her. None of the items were fancy, but when Grace put them on, she looked like a proper lady. After she changed, I invited her to the table. While she was taking a shower, I quickly prepared some pasta and red bean salad, all of which were trivial because I hadn't made any money yet. When we started to eat for a little while, Grace suddenly burst into tears. Nobody has ever been so kind to me. I can't repay you, but if you want to... I knew what she was thinking, but that was not who I was. Really? Bro, you're raiding, you're raiding homeless people. And you're saying, you're saying, but I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> I know I took you home, gave you, gave you clothing, started changing your ranking amongst the other homeless. However, uh, that's not who I am. You're a beautiful girl, but doing so is not the right thing at all. Besides, I'm not that kind of man. Her relief on her face upon hearing that from me told me that I had done the right thing. We finished dinner in silence, and then she asked- I was hoping I would get lucky that night. Asked me to take her back to her spot on the street where we met. Of course, I agreed, even though it was already quite late. I took her home with some other clothes from my ex, some soap, two old blankets, and leftovers. When we arrived at her home on the side of the road, she cried and gave me a grateful kiss on the cheek like a friend and said, I will never forget you. And I would never forget the softness of Grace's kiss on my cheek. Then he cut up her body parts and put it in a vat of acid. That's how this story would genuinely end. That's how this story would genuinely end. Nobody would actually fucking do this. Like, like dude, this guy, it, it, this is literally a psychopath story. Like, yeah, you're helping them, but like, you're also like, this is just weird. Like, this is just weird. Interruption, G Fuel Shaker Cup, down below, bottom left, tag, that's it, back to the vid. Almost every day after school, I would go over to where she sat. Sometimes I would bring meals for both of us. We ate and chatted and gradually became good friends. We maintained that habit almost daily for two months, even though it was just an act of charity at first. At that time, she got a job at a food store and occasionally brought food back to both of us. She also found a nearby shelter and could take a bath there once a week. I was glad to see her life improved. Once a week? When we said goodbye, I often got a kiss on the cheek from her, and it made my heart flutter. One evening, after three months it of It made my loins tingle. I longed for... What was her name? I longed for Grace. But knowing that she was not a 10 out of 10 waifu, it would never work. I invited her to my apartment again with the Bro reason got jittery. that... A change of setting would be nice. As chatty as we were normally. Why is she dirty again? What the fuck? Bro, she looks per bro, she looks perfectly fine here. Again, with the reason bro, that a change she has of a job now setting would be nice. As chatty as we were normally. On the drive home, neither one of us said a word. We knew what would happen when we got home. She had washed and wore the best clothes in the pile of old clothes from my ex. And what should have happened did happen. As soon as the door opened, we rushed into each other. We made out wildly and had sex for a couple of hours in my place. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I was smart enough to understand what it might bring me. Afterwards, Grace has informed me she had this disease called syphilis. Unlucky. Unlucky, I guess. GGWP. But I was not rational enough to think at the moment what she... Unlucky. Unknowingly, Grace had told me that she had contracted something called HIV. <laughs> She put all the gratitude into it and cried a bit when we were done. But this time, I- GGWP, GGWP, GGWP. Knew it was happy tears. But when I woke up the next morning alone in that apartment because Grace had left late the night before, I lied in bed worried that she might have a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> the next day- my my area started to get really itchy. These warts started forming. I didn't know what was going on. And immediately felt itchy all over. Oh, Jesus. I made an appo Yo, nah. appointment to see a doctor for a checkup and didn't see Grace for a week. I didn't catch anything. Phew. God damn. Until the doctor told me I had AIDS. I was happy and relieved. 
so I ran to Grace's place to find her. I didn't actually catch an STD. I ended up getting ringworm. But Grace was not there. Even her stuff was not there as usual. I stood in that corner waiting all afternoon, but didn't see her come back. When it began to get darker, my thoughts became negative. Could it be that she was upset upon knowing that I suspected and discriminated against her? Grace might have left because I didn't see her for a week after we had sex. I liked her and didn't want to lose a great girl like Grace. At that thought, my tears started to fall and I couldn't see well anymore. But a few seconds later, I saw a vague figure of a girl running towards me. She hugged me tightly, and I immediately realized the familiar scent. I thought you abandoned- S Familiar scent? Well, like, you can't recognize her face? What are you, a dog? ...into me. I didn't dare to leave the spot at all because I waited for you, but to- I recognized that 34th block Taco Bell smell. Today is the day for me to take a shower in that shelter. I thought- Bro, why don't you just let her live with you? <laughs> like, like, you're- you guys are basically dating at this point. You're still- you just pick her up every day off of the streets. You have sex, and then you bring her back. Like, that's, like, closer to, like, prostitution. Like, like if you actually like her, why are you making her stay at a homeless shelter? But you wouldn't want to come back finding me- It's because she's not- she, she is still not 10 out of 10 waifu. She is currently an 8.63. Stinking, so I had to go there with all of my belongings. Did I make you wait long? Without letting Grace finish what she was saying, I held her tightly and kissed her passionately. That moment I knew this was the girl for me. From that day on, Grace moved in with me in my apartment. We left the apartment together hand in hand, and the neighbors stopped looking at us with scornful eyes. Sometimes Grace woke me up in the morning with the scent of fried eggs, because cooking was still quite new to a homeless girl like her. Brother, day brother, she was homeless for like a year. Like, <laughs> she, like, like, she knows how to cook. She got kicked out of the house at 20. What do you mean this is new? She wasn't homeless since birth. She, she had a home. She knew how to cook. We had dinner together, sometimes cooked by me, sometimes brought back from the store by Grace. We were the two happiest people in the world, and we still are. Now I'm 27 and Grace is 26. I graduated from DDS and joined a nice oh, practice. Oh no, she was homeless for four years then. Although I was the main earner in the family since I started to make some serious money, during one year of dating, Grace was extremely hardworking. I've never seen her sleep in, be lazy with household chores, or intend to betray me. I think I've found the woman of my life. How do you think I should propose to her? Should I do something special, or just buy a simple ring and ask her at our daily meal? Let me know in the comments. I am so ready, guys. What should we comment? Oh, this is two years ago. Fuck. I was going to say, if this is a new video, I'm about to comment the most whack shit ever. I was about to comment. I think, I think you should propose at her work. Oh my god, bro chat. The other day, I saw this video of somebody proposing at a McDonald's. I was like, oh god. I was like, dude. Like, bro, they're not even paying attention. Bro, like, I'm not gonna diss that. Like, I'm glad they're happy with each other, right? But, like, I like I would've just done it at home. All right, now we're on the fucking wackiest video ever. 24 hours with that.